All right, guys. Well, welcome back to Tying Tuesday. Um, I'm Dave. I'm going to be kind of walking you guys through a, uh, a green butt skunk, which most trout anglers may have heard of it, but rarely does it ever get fished. Uh, it's a great little bug, and, you know, truth be told, is much more well-known throughout the whole steelheading community, but uh, you certainly can fish them throughout the entire Rocky Mountains, um, certainly during streamer season. A lot of fun. I'll even fish them down to really small sizes uh, all the way through through the summertime, you know, spring, summer, fall. Uh, it's a great bug, and it really doesn't weigh much. So the reality is, is you know, all of you who want to fish a, a five weight or a four weight, but you want to throw something a little bit bigger than, you know, your average parachute atoms, you know, you can really throw these things. And because they don't have much weight, uh, it's not going to set off your rod or anything. It'll be very, very manageable. Uh, but yeah, they're great. You can fish them in low water. You can fish them in high water. They've got a little bit of color to them too. So they do pop a little bit, which is great. And obviously you can kind of mix and match what other colors you want at the end of the day. Um, but kind of following this recipe, I'll show you kind of the, the more traditional way of kind of just adding a little bit of color in there. Certainly the red tail, the green tag, black body, silver rib. So let's get going. So for starters today, we are going to be tying on some Tiemco 799s. It's a great hook. You can get them all the way down to a size 8 that we're carrying. Uh, and you can go all the way up to like a size 2 if you're really tying for, you know, true steelhead or really, really large trout. You could certainly go, go all the way up. I personally find that 6s and 8s, this right here is a 6. Um, is just a perfect all-around size. Twos are kind of a bit much, I think, for, for most trout. But like I said, that's up to you to decide. You can certainly mess around with that. Um, you can see that one of the reasons, honestly, that I, that I like it, uh, especially for a fly like this, is this shank part is actually pretty straight. Um, you'll certainly find plenty of different kind of models of salmon hooks, and some have kind of exaggerated curves in the shank. I really like a straight shank keeps everything kind of a little bit lower. It's a little bit smaller profile. Um, but again, that's nothing more than an opinion. Feel free to, uh, to use whatever you like. Now, for starters with the thread, you're gonna wanna, you know, have a decently strong thread. So if you're tying with, you know, 8-aught, 10-aught, 14-aught, you're gonna really wanna bump it up in size. Uh, one of my favorite threads for this is Semperfly Nano Silk. Fantastic thread for pretty much everything. Uh, and the 6 aught is ridiculously strong, so even if you're tying, you know, a decent sized streamer, you can still keep your thread size down and, uh, and get nice tight wraps, nice tight heads, and, uh, and it's just a great all-around thread to have in your arsenal. But to get started, we're gonna put this guy on and add a nice little base layer of thread. And we're gonna walk this guy back. You can cut this tag out. We're gonna walk this guy back pretty much all the way to where it just starts to start bending down, at which point we'll add in a nice little tag. So we'll go to oh, about right here. Perfect, we'll add one more, perfect. And next up is we're gonna add our flash, okay, and add a little tinsel. So for this stuff, I find that uh, you can get Danville's gold and silver flash. It works great. Um, it's not too big, it's not too small. It comes in a variety of sizes. Um, you can go with a size 10 or you can go, go with a size 14. Uh, we're actually gonna be using both sizes in this particular fly. Uh, but just to kind of speed up the, the wraps on the back and just to add the tag, I like using a 10 just because it does speed up the process a little bit. So you're going to tie that guy in there, secure it, and then go forward. You know, give yourself like maybe a centimeter of extra material to tie in until we snug it up right there. I like to go forward just a few wraps to get this bobbin out of the way. And then we're going to add this guy. So when you wrap this, keep in mind you want these wraps to be they don't have to be perfect, it's, it's not the end of the world, but we do want them to be kind of snugged up so we have one solid piece of silver in there. Like that. Ooh. Let's walk that back. 
just a little bit. Perfect. And tie that down. Now once you got this guy all snugged up in there, you can check your side. Perfect. It's all covered. Add three or four good wraps, snug it up, and we can trim this out. Okay. Now the next step uh, is we are going to want to be adding a nice little bit uh, of red hackle fibers. Now for this, there's really plenty of options that you can go with. Um, I think to find the right length, to have a little bit more webby of a barb uh, in the tail so it kind of sticks together real nice. I like to use schloppen. You can use saddle hackle, you can use neck hackle. Um, doesn't really matter as long as your hackle is basically long enough and obviously the right color. For this guy, we use this nice red guy. And I, you know, I kind of avoid the stuff all the way up at the tip. I like to use the stuff that's a little bit lower down. It is a little bit webbier, as you can see. It kind of wants to stick together. It's easy to work with. It comes out nice and straight. And you almost always get a little bit of extra length. So you can make a longer tail if you want that. You can make a little short one if you want to do that. But it's just easier to kind of handle and work with. You just grab those barbs, pull down on the stem, and they'll pop right off. Now some people will put these into basically like a hair stacker. You can, I, you know, I think because you're not adding a ton of them, I think it's really kind of just advantageous and speeds up the process to pull them off, kind of stack them up in your fingers. You can see that they, they stack and cord kind of nicely. And then once we got that, we just tie this tight, nice little guy right in here. And now when you put it on, uh, try to be diligent about keeping the barbs together. If you kind of like have loose fingers, they'll kind of splay out a little bit and it doesn't always come out super clean. So we got it like that. It's rolled up. Before you cinch it down all the way, check your length. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, if you got a couple extra rogue hairs and fibers out here, you can always trim them out. Nobody would ever notice. But I like to add this so it kind of extends just a little bit past the bend. So it does actually come out like a tail. Okay. And once we're like, yep, we like that, throw a couple extra wraps on there, snug it up, we're good. Now the rest of this stuff, headed up towards the eye of the fly, we don't need it, we can chop that stuff out, okay? Kind of lick your fingers a little bit, you can really cinch that up. You can see where those fibers want to come together. See these little extra stragglers if you got them? Trim them, done, okay? So now that our tail is nice and happy on here, the next part is we've got to add uh, the green. Now for the green, um, I like to use Antron. There's certainly plenty of, of other options you can use. Um, I find that Antron just has a really bright, sheeny, vibrant look. You know, I don't know if that necessarily makes a big difference in terms of uh, catching fish, but I certainly think it looks nice. And so just having a little bit of extra bright, vibrant material does kind of seem to make the fly really pop. Because remember, most of this fly, aside from the red tail, most of this fly is actually pretty dark. You know, we got a white wing, but then we really just have like a big black body. So having this nice bright green really pops it. And we're gonna put this guy in here. Now, if you're tying, as I said, you know, this is a size six. Size sixes, you know, I find that I don't really need to, how would you say this, kind of just peel away at the Antron, usually the amount that they give you um, is, is certainly adequate to, to tying it. doesn't over bulk it, it doesn't under bulk it. We get this guy, tie that down, and you're gonna go up maybe a couple centimeters, okay? Now, we tied this guy back, you see where that tag is at? It's almost back covering the red, the, uh, you know, kind of onto the red tail, but not, not quite want that in there and I find having it honestly be just a tiny bit loose kind of helps you get going because then you kind of got to change direction and go back up it. Make sure these wraps are nice and tight. Kind of stacking them just a little bit on the previous wrap. Like that. And then tie this down. Remember this isn't going excessively far up the shank. All this really is, is just this tiny little green, you know, butt to it that kind of just makes it pop because we're going to move forward and, and continue adding bulk. So now that that guy is all tied down, 
pull it taut, and we can trim it out. All right. Now, before we move on to the next step, a um, couple things to note. I'm going to be tying tinsel back in, but what I want you guys to note is this tinsel is pretty much the next size down. So it's a little bit smaller. Same coloration, it's gold on one side, silver on the other. So certainly if you wanted to have the ribbing be gold, you could do that. I like the silver myself. Really complements black in the dubbing, but it is, it's a little bit thinner. Being a little bit thinner, just keep in mind, don't wrench on it quite as much. You don't have quite the luxury of strength that you do on the other stuff. Now tie that tag in just right where you stopped with the green antron, okay? Everything's looking good, yup. You can always roll your fly, check the other side if you're wondering. Get that guy snugged up. Mylar does tend to kind of slide a little bit with uh, with nano silk just because it is so strong but it's kind of slick so if you have to add another extra wrap that's totally okay now that we've got this guy in it's prepped ready to be ribbed up but what we really need to do is we actually need to start adding our dubbing body before we start wrapping this tinsel up so what I'm like to do I personally am a huge fan of dubbing loops always have always will be make a nice little dubbing loop Take your dubbing wax, run it kind of on either side, add a little bit of that tack to it. It just helps bind everything. And now we're on to our dubbing. So again, with this, you can use whatever black dubbing you like as long as it's kind of coarse. Um, you don't want to use your dry fly dubbing that's black. It's too small, it's too fine, it'll bind up. You won't quite have this nice kind of elegant flair to it. We want it to be kind of kind of squishy looking. Coarse dubbing tends to be just perfect for that. Uh, I, I'm using uh, UV black ice dub. It's very simple, cheap, very common. You can find it here pretty much at any time. Uh, and obviously ice dub comes in a million different colors. So feel free to, to dump on, down into that. We're gonna take a good size clump like this and feel free to be a little generous. Now, you can be a little bit sparser up here at the top of your dubbing loop. You can be a little bit sparser up here, but as you're going down, keep in mind we're going up the fly and the fly kind of grows like this, kind of conical, if you will. So as you're adding more in here, the lower you are on your dubbing loop, you can be a little bit more generous uh, in terms of how much dubbing you're actually applying to it. Okay, so we get that in there, add it. I kind of squish it up in there so it gets a nice tight Kind of pouch in there. We'll do one more. Perfect. And maybe one more. All right. Sweet. Now, now that this guy's all in there, we're pretty much set. We need to get this dubbing loop all twisted up. So this is just a common, simple dubbing twister. There's many different types of dubbing twisters out there. Um, at the end of the day, choose one that works for you. I like these because they're short. You can basically take the arms, put them in there. You pull them down. The arms and the legs of the uh, dubbing loop kind of contract on themselves. And then I pinch right here, right below where my dubbing's at, and I spin it. Make sure you're pinching this because the second you release it, it's going to want a cord. Okay? So we'll do this one or two more times. This is also another time and place where, you know, having the nano silk really shines. It's super, super strong, so you can put a lot of tension and torque on it. And you don't gotta worry about breaking your dubbing loop and kind of starting this whole process over again. So now we're in there, pull it taut, you'll see where it's happy. And then when you take some hackle pliers, it's certainly the easiest way. You can tie it in with this, but if you ask me, you're just asking for trouble. I've broken enough of these things that I don't wanna do it. Um, but I use hackle pliers, get a good pair that has a little rubber grabber on the end. Put that on there and notice where I grabbed it. I didn't grab it directly where the dubbing stopped. I also didn't grab it all the way down here at the bottom. I grabbed it just a little bit below in this kind of free range right here. Reason I do that is it A makes it really easy to tie off uh, and B it's like if you need to kind of move and adjust it, you kind of got some wiggling room here to do that. Okay. So now we cut below it, now we're rocking. Now we're ready to really just bring this up, but before we do, we're gonna need to bring our thread wraps up to kind of catch up with the dubbing. So we bring this guy up, 
And one thing you'll notice with these salmon hooks, or well, kind of salmon style hooks, uh, is that they're an open loop die. So you will have to capture the second piece of the loop right here and really close that. So make sure your thread wraps actually go all the way up and around that and then snug that up, okay? It also makes a nice little platform when we're tying in our wing here later. So the next part of this is we start wrapping. Okay, and each wrap, slowly move forward. Make sure they're kind of tight, so I like to wrap forward, pull back, wrap forward, pull back, and just kind of make sure everything is nice and tight and clumped up in there. Don't worry if you seem like you got you know, too much dubbing in there. As long as it's nice and tight, you can always trim it out and kind of work with it. There's no problem doing that. You can see that I've got a little extra length. Again, don't worry about it. You can go through and you can actually cut that out if it really bothers you. Okay, pull it back, pull it back, back. Walk this guy forward. Okay, now make sure you stop a little early. Um, I think one of the most common things people mess up, especially with flies uh, like this, is they kind of get in the habit of, of really bringing it all the way up because they've got all this extra material and they feel like they have to. You really do not have to, okay? So you can see I finished right there. You can see how that little bit of working material right here of thread, exposed thread, makes it super easy for me to tie this off wherever I like. Okay, tie that off. Okay, you also don't have to deal with all this extra junk coming out the front. Once it's all secured down, trim her up. Okay, now there's a couple ways you could do about this. You see how we've got all this extra, extra flare, extra length? It's kind of almost overwhelming it seems. You can kind of tease some of it out. Any of the loose pieces of dubbing that were in the dubbing loop will usually come out real quick. You can also peel it up like this, peel it down like this, and then you can actually just take your scissors, kind of hold this clump, and you can trim it back a little bit. Take a lot of that excessive gangle out of your fly, but hey, if you like it, then you can also just go right ahead and keep that in, okay? Now that we're right here, we're ready to actually wrap this up, okay? So this is our tinsel we wrapped in just after we uh, wrapped in the green antron. So we want to wrap this guy up. So these wraps don't have to be, there's no exact recipe for how many wraps you have to have. Um, my, you know, my opinion is whatever you choose to do, try and make them even, okay? If we can make them even, it's hard to really make it look bad which is nice. Okay, just like that. Looks pretty even. Yeah, looks pretty even. Bring it up, around, tie that guy off. Bam. And trim her out. Okay, this extra stuff up here, you can just comb your fingers back and up and over. Throw a couple wraps, it'll clean it up real quick. Okay, so the meat and potatoes are right there. We're pretty good. What we got to do next is we have to add a collar to this guy. Okay, now the collar of your fly, I personally like neck hackle for this. Um, I think neck hackle is just like the perfect consistency. Um, unlike the schlappen, it's a little bit finer. Uh, it's not quite so webby. So as you're wrapping it, comes out really nice and crisp and clean looking, very fine uh, barbs on the feather. And as you can see, they kind of taper, so it's kind of like a spade, so you get smaller as you're going up. If you were tying a very large one, you certainly could be utilizing a lot of the barbs down towards the bottom of the stem. There's nothing wrong with that. But as you can see here, if I was to try and put that on, those barbs are a little too long proportionally uh, to that of my fly. So what we're really going to need to do is we need to go up the fly, or uh, excuse me, up the feather and get to some of the shorter barbs, okay? So I'm liking this stuff that I'm seeing kind of right up in this area. So we're going to grab it right here 
and pull down, grab it right here, pull down. Just clean off this stem a little bit, like that. And because all this stuff is, we're not using it, just cut it, just get rid of it, okay? So this is really what we're, what we're working with, okay? Kind of the top of the, of the feather. Now, there's also people who, you know, like to tie it in from the tip. You could tie the tip in if you wanted, exposing that by just holding here, pulling down, tying in the tip and wrapping it that way. Personally, because we're already pretty much at the head of the fly, uh, I'm a big fan of kind of tying it in from the lower side. So actually the bigger feathers for or, uh, the bigger barbs first and wrapping those guys in. And then as they're going up, they're starting to get slightly shorter and shorter and shorter. And it helps kind of just nice taper to the body of my fly. So we're going to take it. And truthfully, you could tie this in either way. You could tie it in concave if you like. Um, like I said, because we're kind of palmering it and we're going to be kind of um, maneuvering these barbs kind of into place, it, it's, it's up to you. So don't try and overthink it. You definitely don't need to. Okay, once this guy's secured, get rid of this extra stem. Here come the old hackle pliers yet again. Grab these guys. Come up here, grab the very tip of your, of your hackle and start wrapping. Kind of move your thread a little bit out of the way and just wrap it. Now when you're wrapping these, I try and shoot for just in front of the last wrap I like having them nice and tight. Um, one thing to note with hackle though, especially if, if you are using schlappen on this fly, one thing to note is it is really easy to overdress a fly with schlappen. Uh, just because those, those we, uh, uh, barbs are a little bit webbier, uh, it, it, it can be kind of difficult, okay? So just keep that in mind. Bring this around like that, Ooh. like that, nice. Get in here, cut that out. And then you see how like all these are kind of splayed out. One way to kind of help coast these guys and get them to kind of come back and get a nice kind of collar to the fly is just bring your fingers up and over the front, capture as many of those barbs as you can. Start working kind of a little bit back, really pinch that guy down. You can see that these guys will want to fall into place. Okay, perfect. Now, we are almost there. You can also kind of get an idea for the length. Generally, my hackle, I like to have it more or less kind of shooting around or at least trying to touch the point of the hook. These guys are a little bit long, but that's a-okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, clean up the head. And now we're on to the wing. Okay, so the wing for this guy uh, is well what many flies have been tied as uh, with with hair wings uh, is cafftail it's great stuff it's super cheap it's super durable um, comes in a variety of different colors uh, hairline carries them pretty much every major company carries them and uh, one thing to note is you'll see down at the bottom they're kind of shorter pieces of hair it's a little bit kind of coarser but it's it's a little bit kind of too short in my opinion up here we start getting to the good stuff and by the time you've gotten to the top you can see that there's two three times as much length uh, in these fibers as down here so if you're just tying like a real tiny one uh, you certainly could be using this you know but for a fly that's like a size 6 a size 8 something in that wheelhouse I like to just use this stuff it's just easier to handle in my hands tying it down is just in general easier and uh, you can always you know take some out you know you don't have to tie in a crazy amount of it okay so what I like to do is try and expose the the actual core here okay like so get a decent clump not crazy but a decent clump again we're not using all of it so you know feel free to be kind of generous with what you're grabbing you don't have to tie it in Okay, nice flat cut there. You can see also when I peeled it and pulled it off of here, I kind of brought it to a 90 degree angle so the tips already kind of line up. Um, 
you certainly could be using a, a hair stacker if if you know if if it bothers you that they don't have a perfectly uniform stop. Certainly, you can throw them in a hair stacker, uh, a hair stacker, give them a rattle, and they'll come out obviously nice and flat like you would any other hair. But truth be told, because it's a it's a streamer, I don't really worry about it. Again, I can always come through and just cut a couple of these little tips off here at the end, the kind of stragglers that are a little excessively long and nobody's gonna really know, okay? So that should be what we have. To give you an idea, you know, I'm pretty much gonna be using half of this. Now, when you tie it down, there is kind of one key component here. We want the wing to be sitting on top of the fly as best we can, okay? We don't want it slumped over, we don't want it kind of shrouded over both sides and so it's not really on top. We want the wing to be truly sitting on top like that, okay? So the best way to do that, get it kind of corded up in your hands like this. Get it kind of corded up. Get a nice tight little bunch, okay? Get a nice tight little bunch and you can see I've got a pretty good grab on it. Take that guy. I like to lead with the hand that's holding it, kind of put that directly on top, and then I take my other two fingers, my index and my thumb and the other hand, and I kind of come in from the side and hold it there. Now when I come through, throw a loose little wrap kind of over the top, still holding with your left hand, loose little wrap over the top, and kind of the next two or three start cinching them up. And pull this guy up, cinch it down again, and then one more. Now, as you can see, that wing is really on top of the bug, okay? And, we, and like I said, that's, that's kind of one of those things that's sometimes kind of difficult to get used to. Uh, it takes a little practice, but the reality is, is once you get it in there and kind of get used to it, it becomes kind of second nature and actually get it to, to sit on top. Now that we've got this guy in here, we obviously need to get rid of all this extra stuff. So we want to get in here and cut it as tight as you can, okay? Give it a nice little cut. And if you have a little extra scraggler pieces, a little blow, there we go. Cut a little bit of this extra stuff over here. Perfect, okay? Lastly, just finish up by covering up that little excessive fur up at the front. Again, make sure you give yourself enough room for the eye of your fly. Nothing's worse than tying a really nice fly and then realizing, hey, I can't actually use this thing. Okay, and then finish it off however you like. Uh, personally, I'm just a huge fan of the whip finisher. It makes your life just so darn easy. Throw a couple on there, and then I'll throw one more on here. Okay, now that that's done, Snug it up, come through, cut it clean. And this is the time if we want to throw head cement on there, you know, whatever head cement you like, UV resin is certainly popular in this day and age. You do whatever you like uh, and put it on there for today just to kind of make it nice and clean. I'm just gonna put a very thin layer of UV. Oh. And don't worry, it's not cured yet, so we can always clean it out of the eyelet. Okay. Perfect. Let's just pull that off a little bit. Perfect. Note to self, using the stem of a hackle feather, turns out, is a fantastic way to clean your eyes at the very end. If you can't find your bobbin or uh, your bodkin, just take a nice stiff little piece. You can throw it right through there, pull it right out, and you're good. Now we cure it. Just hit it with the UV light. Oh, we got a little exposed there, but that's okay. A little bit more. Okay. Rocking. This guy's ready to fish. 
You, you can always kind of tell where this thing's going. In a nutshell, the wing and typically the neck and the collar, it's nice to have them kind of all end roughly at the same point. It gives it this nice kind of, not a teardrop, but it's a, it's a nice little shape. It, it comes out clean, comes out proportionate, uh, and it's great and good to go. But obviously fly tying is all about having fun, so. You know, feel free to mess around with different colors. Like I said, this is just a, you know, kind of the classic red and green with the black body, silver wrap, white wing, but um, you can experiment around with a variety of different colors, a variety of different materials as well. Like I said, you know, if you got saddle hackle of every color, feel free to use that instead of the neck hackle. If you've got, you know, some other types of kind of semi-fine fur that you wanted to try as a wing, feel free to do that as well. Uh, but yeah, that is a green butt skunk. It's a great little pattern. Like I said, you could throw this on a four weight and, and not feel like, you know, it's, it's crazy heavy. These things really just don't weigh that much is that is really the end of it. So yeah, good to go.